Hey everybody, we are out in the Idaho desert and we just had a great shoot shooting pictures of some baby fox pups. Uh, just up here on this ridge, here are some of the photos that we got from the shoot. Uh, it was really fun, we got a tip that there was a fox den just to the side of this kind of hill thing. And so we came out, didn't see anything in the den, so we just hiked around the rocks. And then we found three really beautiful red fox pups. And I, I got quite a few really fun shoot shots. I was able to be, you know, 15, 20 feet from them and just sat there for about 20 minutes just taking pictures of them. There are a few things that helped me to get the shots and get up close. I'm only using a 200 millimeter lens. And so you have to really be careful to not, not scare off or stress the animal so that you can get that close. A couple of the things that really have worked for me to get close to animals without stressing them out and getting, making them afraid um, is one is I always turn my body away from the animal. So if the animal's over there, I'll kind of turn my body this way and just look, you know, maybe I'll shoot left eyed. Um, and what it helps to do is it, it just signals to the animal that you're not really concerned with them. You're turned to the way, you know, if you're facing right at the animal, it's more, uh, more, a little bit, makes them a little bit more afraid. Another thing is uh, knowing a little bit of hunting knowledge can actually help you with uh, photography when you're shooting animals. Like with the fox pups, sometimes they'd go hide behind a rock for a couple minutes and if I got to a good position I want them to come out, uh, if you make a little kissing sound with your lips, like that's how hunters will call in coyotes and stuff. So knowing that, knowing a little bit about the animals, it, every time I did that the foxes at all whoop, come right up to the top of rock and I could get another shot. Uh, so that really helped uh, and knowing a little bit about the animals can can definitely help you Another thing is you don't want the shutter click to be too loud So I switch from uh, continuous high where I normally shoot over to quiet shutter Sometimes if your camera has a quiet shutter available on it that can uh, just dampen just the difference between this is continuous high And this is quiet shutter just a little bit quieter to not stress out the animals any more than you really need to. I shoot on the lowest aperture available wet, uh, for this shoot because I, I wanted to really blur out the rocks. There wasn't a big distance between the fox and the background, so I really wanted to blur out that background so that they'd stand out a little bit. Then the next thing is watch for that sun. We were out here in the evening time, that's when we're most likely to see the animals and when the animals are going to look their very best. So I moved around so the sun was facing the animals so it would light up their eyes and get beautiful catch lights. Uh, to me that helped a lot. Then to get really sharp photos, I'm, making, I'm using an image stabilized lens trying to hold really steady and, um, and I'm sometimes bringing up my aperture just a tiny bit if I'm worried about the sharpness. On this lens, I know I can shoot at 200 millimeters and get sharp shots. Sometimes you might want to stop down to f, you know, 3.2, maybe to f4, just to get a little bit better sharpness depending on your lens. But I know on this lens, I'm okay. I don't use teleconverters anymore. I'm done with them. I, I've tried you know, the Nikon brand teleconverter with a lens that's built to work with a teleconverter and just haven't got good results. And so I don't use teleconverters at all anymore. I just shoot and crop in. And with 36 megapixels, I can feel like I can do that. So that's a little bit of uh, my shoot from the Idaho desert. Hope that helps. See ya.